one thing we have to know and recognize as coaches is that while there are individual differences between people, we're all the same animal doing the same movement. So yes, you're built differently to me, I'm built differently to you. But you have a shoulder, I have a shoulder. You have a hip, I have a hip. The way we need to look at movement is similar to the way a sports physician or physiotherapist would. If you hurt your shoulder and you go and see a physio, they don't have to take a photo of your shoulder, a measurement, an MRI, CT scan, send it away, get a perfect model made up of your shoulder, show you your shoulder, show you what's wrong and how it's gonna be fixed. Huh. They just reach under a desk, they pull out a model of an A shoulder, they say, you're a human, you have A shoulder, this is what's wrong with it and this is how we're going to fix it. If we can recognize those global similarities in people, we can build a coaching system based around people and then apply individual differences to that. Almost every problem and breakdown that we see in lifting stems back to one of three biomechanical rules. That's what we build the Zero Coaching System on. That's what the Zero Coach Development System is all about when it comes to the technical and programming side of things. And I'm gonna demonstrate this to you today by taking you through something that you probably teach to all of your clients, no matter who they are, no matter what their individual difference is in terms of shapes, sizes, different sporting backgrounds, you probably teach this thing to everyone exactly the same. Breathing and bracing. Breathing and bracing is an integral part of the three main compound lifts, squat, bench press, and deadlift. I'm gonna show you how we can take the zero framework and apply it to breathing and bracing, and once you understand that framework, you can apply it to any of the three biomechanical rules or into any lift that you choose to do so. The first part of the framework is that we need to understand the principle behind the thing that we are trying to teach. Once we can understand that principle, we can see how it fits into the bigger picture, we can see the upstream and downstream effects, and more importantly, we can find simple language to cue this to our clients so that they get a result when they try to apply it to their lifting. Breathing and bracing is a complex system that we input into the greater systems of squat, bench press, and deadlift. Breathing and bracing is a combination of a few things. There's the breathing aspect itself, there's the muscular component, and there's the pressure component. We don't need to go in depth in the details right now. What we need to understand is a few things. First, we need to understand what happens when we go through a process called forced inhalation. When we go through forced inhalation, when we take a really big breath outside of the normal breathing that you do at rest, when we force ourselves to breathe in more, a few things happen. Our shoulders elevate, our scapula elevate, our thoracic extends, our rib cage expands. These are all positions and movements that are not favorable to success in things like squats and deadlifts. When we go through the process of forced exhalation, when we force air out of our body, the opposite happens. Our scapula depress, our abs contract, our rib cage comes down. We create a lot of pressure in our abdomen. Those are the processes that we want to see happen when someone is performing a squat or a bench press or a deadlift. So the muscular component happens on the exhale. The positional component happens on the exhale. However, when we exhale, we release a lot of the pressure that we've created on the inhale. So how do we keep the pressure? We hold our breath. So it's not just a matter of breathing in and holding the air that we pull in. It's a matter of trying to push the air out without letting that air out of our system. This has a fancy name, it's called the Valsalva Maneuver. You never have to remember that, but it's the action of trying to push air out against a blocked airway. So, if we want to apply this into lifting, it's going to help us formulate ways to use language, to use cueing, to get a client to understand what's going on. A lot of the language around breathing and bracing when it comes to cueing is misleading or just incomplete. Think of the common cues for breathing and bracing. Brace like I'm gonna punch you in the stomach. That's incomplete or it doesn't tell the full story. It's ambiguous. 360 bracing. That's also a little bit ambiguous. We know what it means because we lift. The average client doesn't quite understand that. So if we can help them feel it, if we can take them through a drill that helps them experience the feeling that they're trying to experience when they breathe and brace correctly, they'll be able to remember that experience with some simple tricks, with some simple language, and then apply that experience into the main lift. Here's the drill that I suggest you try 
and see the difference it makes to both your lifting and your client's lifting. First, you're gonna take a really big breath in, as much air as you can, and then you're going to push it out hard and fast. Next, you're gonna take that same big breath in. You're gonna breathe in as much air as you can, and then you're going to force it out. This time though, you're not going to stop forcing it out. All on one breath out, you're just gonna keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. What you should experience is your abs turning on, yourself starting to cramp and shake as you try to force more and more air out. That's the brace. The difference is, of course, we want to hold that air while we're doing it. So the third part of this drill is you're going to take that same big breath in, you're gonna keep breathing in as much as you can, then you're going to try and push that air out. This time though, you're not going to let any air out. You're gonna keep trying to push air out, but you're not going to let any air out. That is what breathing and bracing is. That is what you want a client to feel and experience while they're performing the lift the entire time they're performing that lift. Give that a try, try it on yourself, try it with your clients. I'd love to hear how you went with it. This is just one example, very simplified, of the kind of depth that we are going to go into in the coach development system. We go deep into the principles, then we look in depth at how we can apply them and how we can problem solve for them when they're not having the effect that we expect them to have. If you have any questions or you want to learn more about the Zero Coach Development System, head to our website, www.zerow.com.au.